How far will money get you? Question, what's the point of living your life If you're living your life to die What's the point of working so hard Just to show off nice things you buy Have you ever thought there must be more There must be more to life I want to let you know that heaven is real time To live pleasing in God's eyes Because you can't take us to heaven when you're there and To get in you don't need degrees But a clean heart and a right spirit, oh God That's all you ask of me See sometimes I lose my purpose When possessions take my focus But you have so much more in store for me What would it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Don't know why we fight for these things down here when we'll be walking on gold Cause a man can gain the world and lose his soul But tell me what's your goal In the end you will have nothing So what's the profit in that? Is given by grace You live out your life for the Hollywood stage Use all your gifts to get rich Get whips But what's going to happen when the Hollywood fades When all your friends forget you And youthful life has left you How far will money get is I own labor. Um, of course, in the background there, we've got um, a very beautiful video, um, Profit, of course, coming out there from um, a dear colleague, a former colleague, colleague yeah. of mine, friend as well, <laughs> yeah. um, Mr. Bijan Peer. Good morning to good you. Good morning, Christine. And how are you this morning? I'm fine this morning. I'm, I'm fine. I'm yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, just before we get into today's discussion, mm -hmm. um, what, what, is, what was the inspiration behind Profit? Uh, profit it just came from, you know, thinking about how we live life today. Yeah. You know, we, we go about seeking all these things, but really and truly, at the end of it all, we only have a short time on this earth. And if you're not living with a purpose, then what's the profit in that? Very, very, very true, very true. Um, so, for those of you who may not know, who mm -hmm. exactly is Bijan Pear? Bijan Pear, <laughs> very simple guy, um, love music, love God, love family, and I like to mess around a little bit, a, a little too much, I like to joke around a bit. You know? With the guitar? <laughs> yes, with the guitar. <laughs> that famous guitar. Um, but, but, you know, you've been someone who has been producing a mm -hmm. lot of positive music, something that definitely um, is needed in this country as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, so hats off to you in terms of, Thank you. you Thank know, you. you've been doing a great job. You've made your mark in the music industry, in the gospel music industry thus far. Um, tell me what led you to get involved in music on a whole? Well, in music, I, I grew up in a musical family. Right. Um, 
Good morning to my father, Leroy Pierre, the Good Pierre. morning to you, yeah. Mr. Pierre. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Pierre, <laughs> mommy. Um, but grew up in a singing family when the family had gatherings. It's always singing. And it's only when I was about four years old, I was in church and hearing this lady singing so off key that <sighs> I thought she was joking. And that's when I realized singing is not a thing that everyone has. Yes. And, and then I started to look at it a bit different. So I started to get into music at that point. At, at what age? I think about four years old. Wow, yeah. so at four, eight, four years, you knew a woman was off key. Now, that is something that only someone has uh, an ear for music would pick up on her because, you know, at the age of four, you're thinking, well, okay, she's just singing. I may or may not take her no, on. It was really bad. It, it was, was bad. So <laughs> it stood out to you. Yeah, and yeah. that's what propelled you to get involved in this field. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what drives you to write? Um, well, my mantra is put life in a song and turn feelings into melodies. Interesting. And everything I go through, I put in a song and it's kind of like my personal diary yeah. that I get the opportunity to share to the world. And by so doing it, it touches others and, and I'm, I'm happy for that. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So How is your support? Um, because I mean, okay, so if you're, you're, you're your own brand. So being okay. someone like yourself you need to have a strong support um, what's your support base like well I get strong support from my family also I want to say good morning to my management team Ten Strings Music Group good morning David Keisha um, I get a lot of strong support from those around me in my close circle and I mean that's really all that I need I don't really need the whole fanfare but so far the music has been getting a lot of good traction and I thank, I thank God and I thank those who support the music as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How has been your journey thus far in gospel music industry? Because you know, it's a very, um, it's not a niche mm -hmm. industry, but it's not everybody gets involved in it. You, mm -hmm. you understand what I mean? Yeah. So you, you could, like you were saying, you can sing, but you're not, not everybody could be a singer in okay. that industry. Okay. Um, how has been your journey in it so far? My journey has been, I've, I've often second-guessed myself and um, it's only lately I realized that it's not really about trying to put out the biggest song and get the most views, but mm -hmm. the first thing about it's gospel music is the message and yeah. it's ministry. So yeah. if I could just connect with one person and one person could say this really blessed me, you know, I was touched by this, that's, that's, that's all I need to do. So you're a writer, producer, musician, mm -hmm. um, what aspect of it do you enjoy most? To be honest, writing. Because it's, it's so weird how I could see my life in the woods after I write the song and that process is my favorite part. Followed by the, the recording of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've accomplished so much yet you've stayed so humble. What keeps you grounded? <laughs> that same circle, <laughs> if, 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 if I try to uplift myself too much, they will, they will humble me. <laughs> and the most humbling thing is, um, God, God humbles you. Yeah. you, you yeah, the, the haughty one will be humbled and the humble one will be exalted. So if you humble yourself, the exaltation will come. It's not like you're looking for it. So yeah. that's, my, that's my stance there. Okay, so when you pick up your pen and you decide you're going to pen a song, mm -hmm. what is the first thing that comes to mind? <coughs> what, is your, what, what, what do you put before everything? What do you think about? Well, it's, it's, as I said, it's like a diary. So I, I come with an experience. I don't sit down to say, I'm, I'm feeling to write a song. Okay. So it's from an experience and the writing actually happens after. The experience and the melody comes first. I have a melody for every experience and it always fits for some reason and I thank God for that. I, he inspires all the writing. And through your music, what do you mm -hmm. hope to achieve? I just hope to bless someone. I just hope because at the end of the day I want to minister and, and that's, the, that's the primary goal, to minister to someone and yeah, that's it. When you look at the gospel music industry in Trinidad, mm -hmm. um, do you think that it has the potential to become bigger than it is? It does have the potential, but... What holds it back? <laughs> to be honest, I'm, I'm fairly new in this whole 
thing. I've been just in my little circle, right. in my little corner. So you're slowly stepping out. Yes, yeah, so I'm still stepping out. So I don't think I could really see yeah, what is holding yeah, it yeah. back. Yeah. But in, in your um, in your own opinion, mm -hmm. it has been a good journey thus far. Yes, it has been. And any possible collaborations we can look out forward to? Um, collaborations, yes. I am working on something with Ron Christopher. Okay. That's a gospel singer from, I think it's Point Fourteen. Mm -hmm. Also, Mikael Gonzalez. He has an album he's working on, and I was blessed to be featured on it. I'm not sure when the album is releasing, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so going back to you initially starting in music, mm -hmm. um, how does it differ from you being in corporate life? It's your transition, your balance, you know, how do you, how do, you do both? It's, how do I balance it? Mm -hmm. To be honest, I am not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm many sleepless nights, there's a lot of grinding when it comes to music. Because one is passion and the other one is sustenance of life. Yes. And you need the both. So I can't neglect one and leave the other. So yeah. I guess it's by the grace of God. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Really but not you're sure. doing it and that's most important. Yeah. Um, because like you rightly said, you need the sustenance yeah. and then there's passion, which you have been exploring. And slowly but surely, you've been out there putting out their work. You know, most times people just see the final product. I don't yeah, think I don't, don't think people yeah. <laughs> know the back end of it, what actually goes into. So tell us a bit about the production of a song. How long would it take you to produce or to write or to just the entire process? Okay, that well, it starts with a draft. So right. I would get the idea, the concept and put down a draft beat and put down the draft idea recording everything. From that point, then I'll go to really fine tune in the song. Mm -hmm. This could be, this could take these. Um, for the most recent song that, I'm, that I've just released, yeah. I collaborated with another producer that's Mark Dingwell of Anomaly Productions. And that process actually took about two months. So it takes a lot of time. And he's living south, I'm living in Aruka, yeah. and back and forth. You know, so it, it's tedious. It's tedious. But it's all worth it, I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so you, this, your, your recent um, release is uh, No Better For Roses. No Better For Roses, yeah. Um, I think it's very self-explanatory if I could interpret it, but I'm not sure if you have a different, <laughs> you know, what, what, what's the meaning behind it? Um, no, better, no Better For Roses. Well, this song, as the song says, life can be hard. It's no bed of roses, but hold on to God. And it's truly the, the Christian experience. It's truly my experience. Mm -hmm. My life has not been a bed of roses, per se. But it's only by holding on to God I've been able to maintain peace and joy and continue living. So, yeah, that, I just wanted to bring that out. And I think so. most of us can relate when you say um, it's no bed of roses. Because, yeah. um, truth be told, no one has a life of, you know, it's a bed of roses, at least to my knowledge. Um, <laughs> if there's anyone out there who's experienced this life of yeah. a full bed of roses, please feel inbox. free yes, to yes, share with me because I mean, I would, I would love to know how you did this. Um, it's probably never too late for me to just start living this bed please of roses. forward that information I to shall, me. I shall. Yeah. And probably, who knows, you could probably do a, like a follow-up to this yeah, song. Yeah. You know, yeah. no better roses and a second song, just better roses. You never know. But really, um, this song can relate. I, I know so many can relate to this song. Um, mm -hmm. What and and when did you write this song? This song was written, I think, late last year. Yeah, late last year, and only fine tuned it in the beginning of this year yeah. it's late last year into this year yeah. and we're now going to wait. well you released it recently i released it today today yeah. right well we're lucky here at PSA <laughs> tv to have um just the first air of no better for roses um when you look at the music industry itself mm -hmm. um how do you deal with i don't want to say competitors but 
you know, do, 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 do you think that you have competitors out there? Um, or do I, you think that they're, they're just people who you probably work with? I do not see competition. Mm -hmm. I don't see this whole thing as, as I operate when I do music. Yeah. It's good music, I'm on board. Mm -hmm. I have no en enemies. If uh, if I am anyone's enemy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am. Uh, please this message me. Let's apology. let's sort this <laughs> out. Um, but I don't in the gospel music especially. I, I don't believe there are or there should be competitors yeah. because of the nature of mm -hmm. the type of music we do. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't believe there is. Okay. So right, we have some possible collaborations now we we have no animosity here so i like i like this very positive vibes <laughs> um do you plan to perhaps take your music outside of the country well my music is on apple music right. tidal deezer any streaming platform and i believe that's like the first step so it will be it is a dream of mine so anyone listening <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, we'll put up your social media handles in a few. Um, but if not music, what would you have been doing? Poetry. Something in the creatives. Yeah, poetry. I, I love poetry. I actually started writing from doing poetry in primary school. So maybe there is hope for me after all. I do write a lot. So do you, if you, you, you started, no, 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 absolutely <laughs> not, absolutely not, mm -hmm. absolutely not. So at, at what age did you, did you think, um, okay, I can sing? Um, up to now, I don't think, you know, <laughs> to be honest, people tell me, whoa, you can really sing. Yeah, and you have this, um, there's this kind of John Legend finish to your song. So it, it's like almost listening to John Legend sing gospel. Well, I good. hate comparing people, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I, I think it's, it's kind of, you can't miss it. Okay. okay. Um, but you know, at, at some point you, you must have said to yourself, well, I'm gonna put this out there. Cause it sounds yeah. good. Well, it, the, the, the highlight for me is not really the singing, but really the message. The message. And I believe everyone could sing even yeah. if it's everyone could be a, a musical minister with the littlest talent because yeah. it's just about working your circle don't try to do a set of runs if you're not a person who does runs don't yeah. try to sing high if you have a low register and <laughs> if you work with what you have I'm it should i'm taking notes here yeah. so if i decide i'm taking notes you know if i decide to get involved in singing yeah. um, i'm i already write so mm -hmm. you never know how this can go but what has kept you in this um, in this industry? What has kept me is seeing the connection of the music to the listeners, yeah. and seeing how it inspires. And some people even tell me it, it helped them through certain circumstances, situations. It it really gives me purpose for doing this, and it's not just about self and you know trying to be the biggest this or that, yeah. you know. Yeah. And yeah, that keeps me, that for sure keeps me doing it, yeah. And I mean, we live in a day and age where we, we see so many young people headed down a bad road. Mm -hmm. um, how important is, you know, positivity and good music? I shouldn't say good music, but positive music to society on the whole, especially to our young people. It's, it's very important. I believe music is music gets into your mind faster than anything else. Yeah, the sound and travels you, Yeah, faster. you can't if you're going down the road. Even if you're not listening to a song, it will stick in your head. Probably later in the night when you're washing the dishes, you might start, catch yourself singing. It's like, <laughs> why is I singing this? And this is a call for all these creative people who do music. Um, be responsible with the music that you put out because it does have a part to play with the society that we live in today and the state of the country today, so. Yeah, what can you do to um, push gospel music big on and make it bigger than it already is? Or how do you think you can help there? I will just keep doing 
writing the music that I keep writing, singing, and I'm willing to do anything else that's needed. So I'm, I'm willing. I don't know it all. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've fairly just started, so I'm willing to do what it takes to get the music out there. How many songs do you have out there again? Uh, I think this is my fifth release. Yeah. Single, right? Single, correct. Any albums? There is. I, okay, I am working <laughs> on an album for next okay, year. So that's exclusive here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we should expect some um, new music soon. Soon, very soon. Sooner rather than later. <laughs> um, so you, you were, we were talking about, if not music, you'll be into poetry. Poetry. Um, when you look at the job market, mm -hmm. you're someone who has, well, you're your own brand, you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So how does that now make you as an individual, how, uh, your mentality, your drive now, you have to be a, a, a it's in a level of discipline mm -hmm. because you, you have nobody over your head telling you, okay, mm -hmm. you need to do this song by a particular time, you need to do this. As an individual now, how does that make you? How does it make me? In terms, terms of, of discipline? an individual, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're your own boss. Mm -hmm. And we, we're comparing that to the regular corporate world mm -hmm. where you have a supervisor, you have, there's this big chain of command, mm -hmm. but you as your own boss, you as your own entrepreneur, how does, how does it differ? Well, discipline is key. I am so amazed and kudos to all those gospel artists who are out there who have been doing it. It is hard work. <laughs> it's hard work. You, do sleepless people nights. Know about people the don't hard know. Work, people no? do not know. And anyone who's trying to get into music, be prepared to sacrifice. Because a lot more money goes out than comes in, especially when you're now starting up. A lot more money goes out, less sleep relationships get affected and it's, 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 it, it takes a toll. So you have to be disciplined, you have to be, you have to be, you have to explain to the people around you and you need to have an understanding circle, you know? Yeah. And it, it makes me a very, it helps me to become a, a more disciplined and organized person. I, I am naturally not organized. That's what I was now going to ask you because, yeah. you know, had it not been for music, mm -hmm. how would your life be without the entertainment or the musical aspect of it? It would be chaos. And there is chaos within the, or there's organized chaos even within yes. the music. Yes. There is organized chaos. Sometimes you get up and like, hey, I have to do this, you know? Sorry for being late today. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah. It, so okay. for, the, um, for the average young person mm -hmm. um, who's listening or who's viewing us this morning, mm -hmm. what would be your message to them? Let's say a young man is watching and he's like, I want to be like Bijan. Hmm. What would your message be to him? My message would be, be like God. Because all men fail. All men fail. And when you're looking at success and all these things, don't look to man, look to God, especially when it comes to discipline and forming of character. Look to God. Wow. Don't look to man. That is probably one of the most um, profound <laughs> and um, very well put statements I've ever heard in a long time. Um, I, I don't think you could have said it any better. Um, Bijon, mm -hmm. I want to congratulate you so much for your release. Um, you know, continue putting out the positive vibe, the positive energy out there. Like okay. I said, I think that's what we need in society. Um, too many times I, I've seen you just go down the wayside. Um, I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's because of what they listen to, but we could only try to mm -hmm. influence them and get that good energy out there f to them through what they listen to. True. It could help. True. Um, so. Tell us a bit about No Better for Roses and I don't know if you want to give us a line, no? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Um, we'll hear it, we'll hear it. We'll, we'll hear it, we'll hear it, of course. So who mm -hmm. was it, who produced this song? And okay, so No so Better it was written by you, written of course. By me. 
It was also produced by me. I have a production company called Beethoven Productions. Right. And co-produced by Anomaly Productions. That's Mark Dingwell. He, he, he took where the song was and he just put the icing on the cake. I, I really love what he did with the track. So, Mark, good morning, bro. We'll, 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 we'll listen to it in a few. Yeah. Um, Bijan, before you wrap things up, I just want your final comments. Life can be hard, so hard, so hard. It's no bed of roses, but hold on to God. Wow, beautiful indeed. Very, very beautiful. That's the John Legend twist. <laughs> So, it's on that note we've come to the end of today's show here on PSA TV. Uh, I'm your host, Christy Kali Singh, and this is Bijan Peer. I want to thank all the previous guests before as well. Um, we're going to toss to the latest. Should I introduce latest. or do you want to introduce? Feel free. So, no better for us is, <laughs> let's take a listen, and we'll head to news directly after. Never give change, pray all you want. The answer is still wait. Starting to doubt when life starts to frustrate. But wait, don't lose your faith. Times when you're starting to lose patience. Remember the hard days when God saw you through, He was there from the start. So although they're trying to break you, it's Father God who make you. So just keep the song in your heart. Life can be hard, so hard, so hard It's no bed of roses, but hold on to God There is beauty in His scars It's no bed of roses, but hold on to God Your foundation steady and not shaken Your bends but not breaking Your dark clouds will all soon be gone Life is hard, so hard, so hard but hold on to God, hold on to God. He never promised you an easy road, there are trials you must face. Never, never promised that the weapons wouldn't form, but all of them would fail. There'll be stumbling blocks to break you down while running in this race. But all your broken pieces, God will put it back in place. Times when you're crying on your knees, saying, Father, help me please. Put an angel over me to guide my way. Giving up, but know that God is big enough. He's a listening ear to every prayer you pray. Pray, life can be hard, so hard, so hard. It's no bed of roses, but hold on to God. There is beauty in your scars. It's no bed of roses, but hold on to God. Your foundation steady and not shaken. Your bends but not breaking. Life is hard, so hard, so hard But hold on to God Cause oh, there is so much peace we often forfeit And so much needless pain we bear See, it's all because It's all because we do not This is your news update to this hour on PSA TV. I'm Christy Kalising with the details. Is the labour sector strong despite numerous retrenchments? And is the Minister of Labour so accommodating as she claims? While well, we chatted with National Trade Union Centre of TNT General Secretary Michael Anisat to get his views on this. 
Here's more. Once any of the labor unions would like to meet with me, they write me, I meet with all of them. My door is always, always open. A statement by Minister of Labor Jennifer Batiste Primus, which seeks to portray her in an open manner. But is this really the case? We've seen time and time again the said minister, a former union leader herself, failing to meet and treat with union leaders and workers. According to National Trade Union Center of Trinidad and Tobago General Secretary Michael Anisat. We can safely say that given all what is happening in our economy, um, whether or not the criticism that has been leveled by the trade union movement has merit or do not have a merit. I'm mindful of the fact that the Honorable Minister works with a cabinet and I can say that we in NATOC, we have um, criticized the cabinet, we have criticized the government for the failure to respond to NATOC's on the several matters that we would have raised with the individual ministers and more particularly with the Minister of Finance. In addition to her indication that she was always open to meet with Labour leaders, the Minister cautioned that some of the issues impacting the Labour movement was beyond her capability and therefore she was forced to operate within her pay grade. To this end, Anisat says, There is obviously a shortage of implementation of issues by this government, a shortage of um, solutions to problems that is besetting Trinidad and Tobago. And the whole question of the retrenchment of um, workers and the alternative employment that is required and the nurturing of those workers who are put on the bread line. Those are critical issues and those are issues that we must address. In her address over the weekend, Batiste Primus further shrugged off widespread criticisms from the trade union movement that she had turned against them and had sold out working class citizens. But Anisat says, I will want to place those issues on the table because to have problems and there are no solutions to the problems will create a loss of faith in the institution which will not renown in the best interest for the industrial landscape of Trinidad and Tobago. Meantime, new information arising from the St. Jude Home for Girls as PSM Media was called upon. Here's more. Not all girls are bad. Those with